Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you uh, some tricks about using tables within LibreOffice Writer. So first things first, if you want to insert a table into your document, you would go up to the table menu and hit insert table. Alternatively, on this main toolbar, you have insert table directly there. Hitting control and F12 simultaneously on your keyboard is another option for inserting a table. Um, when you click on insert table or you go back basically up there to the menu, it's going to ask you how many uh, rows and how many columns you want to add. Um, so here we can see a visual representation of that. Columns go left to right, so four columns, five columns, six columns, and rows go top to bottom. So here we have three columns, four columns, five columns. Let me switch to the insert table from the menu interface and you'll see that it brings up a uh, insert dialog instead. But effectively it works the same. So five columns, that would mean left to right, and then five rows would mean top to bottom. You combine those two attributes and you get five times five for a total of 25 cells. Um, so let's go ahead and insert this table right here. And now you can see all of our cells that we can work with. They've been equally divided based on the size of the table. Uh, if we ever want to add additional rows into this table, one option is to go and left click right on the far left side of the table. And then we can right click, go to insert, and rows above or rows below. Likewise, you can do the same thing with columns. Uh, but if you're going to insert columns, you probably want to select from the top. So you're selecting the table column, then you go to insert columns left, columns right. Once again, you right click to bring up this insert menu. And so there we've inserted one column and we've also inserted one row uh, for a total of 36 cells. So let's go ahead and type in a little bit of information to the cells of our table. And let's say that we wanted the first row of this table to basically be a header row. So it wants to have some different traits to it like a background color. Well, by selecting the row specifically, we can modify only this row of the table. So we could go up here to table contents and uh, we might be able to say, change it to a heading two. So now all of these, oops, all of the cells inside of this uh, row are going to be basically using the heading two style, whereas the rest of the table is styled differently. Likewise, we could select it and go down here to the menu bar that's uh, basically in the bottom, the table menu that only shows while you have a table selected. Go over to background color and then choose a color that we'd like for the background, such as uh, light blue or gray or something of that nature. And then that basically clearly defines that this heading of the table is quite different than the rest of the table. Now, if you ever want to select the entire table all at once, you can go to the top left hand corner and left click, which selects every single cell in the table. Alternatively, if you have any part of the table selected, you can just hit select table down on the table bar. So let's try that out and you basically get the same result. Just like any other part of your document, you can take these cells and determine the text alignment. So you might not want it to be left aligned. You might want it to be centered or maybe you want part of it left aligned, but then you want the heading to be centered. So you can select the heading by left clicking on the row and then going to center horizontally. Let's say that you wanted some of your cells to be wider or larger than the other ones. Well, you can modify the entire columns width by selecting over here on this border and left clicking, dragging and dropping it to where you want it. And what it does is basically takes some of the space from these columns over here and adds it to this one, or more specifically, the one right to the right of the column that we just increased. Now, let's say with our remaining columns that we wanted it to be evenly distributed in terms of width, because we didn't want to just make this one large and this one small, but we wanted to make this one a little bit larger than all of these, but we wanted these to be equal in size. Well, we can modify all of these five columns over here to the right simultaneously by left clicking in the top left hand cell and dragging and dropping until we get to the bottom right hand corner. So now we have all 25 of these cells selected, or is that 26, whatever. Um, 
And now if we want to distribute all the cells equally, we can go down here to optimize size, left click it, and look for where it says distribute columns evenly. Left click that, and the size of all these five remaining columns has been equalized using up the remaining space contained in these five columns. So they're all identical essentially now. If at the end of creating our table, we decide that we don't actually need this last row, so we have content and all the other cells, but this last one, because it turns out we made the table a little bit too big, we can simply left click on the left of that final row and either right click to bring down the drop down menu for delete and select rows to delete the selected rows, or we can left click to select that row and go down here to the table menu bar hit delete rows, and that will do the exact same thing. One really cool thing you can do specifically with tables is to delete all of the text inside of them without actually deleting the rows and cells. So if we select all of these cells in the bottom row here, and we simply hit the backspace button on our keyboard, it deletes the text inside of them, but it leaves the cells completely alone. Uh, likewise, if we want to delete the whole table, we can't actually do that by simply selecting everything and hitting backspace. That only gets rid of the content inside. So if we want to delete the table, what we actually need to do is select the whole table, right click, go to delete, and then table. Okay, now let's do a quick more realistic example using tables. Here we have a column for money where in January, uh, two money was coming into our business February five money and March four money now this is all well and good it's kind of makes sense but the problem is on the money column these cells are only saying two it's not specifying what kind of currency you have it in and it's not specifying any decimals uh, which would be important if say you were using the dollar so what we can do is with these four cells because this total cell is going to be a, a, basically a dollar value as well we can select these cells by left clicking and dragging on them go down here to the table menu bar and hit number format currency which will immediately take any of the money we have there and convert it into a dollar sign amount now finally one more thing here we could manually add up these values, $2 plus $7 plus $4 for a total of 11. But an alternate trick that you can do within tables is to use a summing function. So in this last cell, what we're going to do is we're going to have it automatically add up the amount of money from these three cells. And we can do that by going down here to where it says sum. So make sure that you have this cell selected. Uh, with your cursor go to sum and now we're going to specify which cells uh, are basically going to be the input for that sum and a library office is so smart that it's already figured out which cells there are those are so it's b2 plus b3 plus b4 you can of course manually type things in and uh, specify larger ranges than this but uh, this is a pretty basic example and it's set it up for us so we can go ahead and hit apply and now it's going to automatically calculate the amount of money from these three cells and add it up to the fourth one down here. Now even cooler is because this is being calculated by a function. If we change one of the values up here like the January money to say 8 and then we click away from that cell it's going to automatically update the total which is really useful when you get into more complicated tables by saving you a lot of work. So this has been a pretty brief introduction to LibreOffice tables. I hope you learned something here. I have been Chris. Thank you for watching. Feel free to check out my Patreon and I'll see you in my future videos.